Jenna, and we are thrilled today to be talking again with a guest that we've had on before, photographer Sally Mwanson. And we are going to talk a little bit different this time. If you tuned in to our last episode with Sally, we talked about uh, preparing for photo shoots. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about more emotional photo shoots, not your run of the mill, typical family get together photo shoots, but ones that are a little bit uh, deeper and maybe a little bit more emotional. Absolutely. At the end of the last podcast with Sally, I mentioned that she's doing something absolutely incredible with the Moncton Hospital. And uh, so thank you for coming back. We're going to chat a little bit about that, but do you want to uh, loosely tell us what it is that you're doing? And we'll go off of that. Uh, loosely speaking, it's, uh, uh, I do remembrance photography for uh, stillborns or babies who were born and will not be going home. Uh, so it's black and white photographs, free of charge for families. That's a fantastic, fantastic service to have available. It is. It's uh, something that Jason and I used uh, 13 years ago now. She was born September 19th. Um, and uh, to tell you the honest truth, I loved every fact about them doing it. I have never looked at the photos. Mm -hmm. Never. That happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But it's nice to know they're there. Yeah. It's nice to know that, that they're there and I really appreciate them and, and I appreciate people like you doing that because some of us, um, our situation was different, um, but some people walk in there at 42 weeks and don't yeah. walk out with a baby yeah. uh, and they're not expecting that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so to have something that they can cherish forever is is an extremely strong thing for you to be able to do and to be brave enough to take those photos and to pass them on to someone who will love them forever. Yep. Priceless. Priceless. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You started doing this as part of a, a, a national program. Yep. It started in the U.S. Uh, in 2005. It's called Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep. And it was started by somebody who uh, lost her son and realized uh, she wasn't going to have any pictures. Mm -hmm. And it was full term. <laughs> There's a bug in here. Yep. Um, <laughs> um, and realized that she wasn't going to have any pictures. So she called a local photographer to see if they'd come and do them. And she did. And that's how it started. Those photos, are they just of the baby or can the families, like they could hold the yep. baby if they wanted to? You're allowed to bring in your whole family, grandparents, siblings. Um, if the hospital will allow pets, right, right. Um, just the, whoever the baby's family is, they're all allowed to be there. The pictures will show them all. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little more for people who haven't even thought of this before? What, what are those pictures like? What are some of the pictures that you can do? with a stillborn or with a, a baby that's not going to go home? Uh, there's a lot of variables. Um, how far along, like their gestational age, um, and sometimes there's some damage during birth. Um, so sometimes you even can do them with, it's called an implied baby. So it's just a blanket, the baby's in there and the parents are looking down, but maybe you don't see the face or just the feet or something. But pretty much any time you can get something, just depends on how far along and what kind of birth it was. Okay. And is this process something that you often find, you know, parents reach out or is it more through social workers and hospital staff that, that the awareness of this program is out there? Around here, it would probably be the hospital. Um, I know a couple of the nurses on labor and delivery, they have my information. I've actually never had a call here. I've been doing it for almost a year. Um, some parents know, but it's not as common knowledge around here. It's some of the bigger cities in the U.S., uh, but the hospital knows. There's a website. They have my card. They have my number. It's definitely something that should be shared around because if you're not thinking of it, exactly. And we didn't know that they were doing it. It was a no. surprise when we oh. left, which was really, like, it was really heartfelt, and it was really nice that they did that for us. So I'm sure a lot of them would do the same thing if they've got your information, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. Sally, get in here ASAP. And Yeah. Yeah. Well, a friend of mine actually lost a baby at 23 weeks, and it was such a crazy time. She didn't even think to call me, and no. she knew I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, it's not what you're thinking of at no. that moment. So no, no. Um, to have the nurses there know yeah. that you're available to do those things uh, is, is fantastic. Well, and I think that's why it's also important for us to talk about it today, to put it out there so more people know about it. So if you know someone who ends up in that situation, mm -hmm. you might think to say, oh my goodness, 
let me reach out to Sally for mm-hmm. you, you know, if that's something you want. Because, yes, when you're in that moment, I'm sure it's not top of mind. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But perhaps that's the kind of thing, you know, when something like that happens to a family that you care about, you want to do something to help. Mm-hmm. And there's not a whole lot you can really do. No. Yeah. But that's something you can at least hey did you know there's someone here locally who will take photos can I help you set that up is that something you want to do yeah no that's a it's a really good idea and to keep along the kid line um you could also go in and you were saying when the boys were in the NICU Mm -hmm. you had uh, photos done in the NICU too which is a great idea as well because I think a lot of people probably think that they're not allowed in the NICU like to Mm -hmm. me I I feel like it's a bubble (laughs) and people aren't allowed to be in there so it is a bubble, mm-hmm. but it's also a bubble that has rules that let people in. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and so we did, when we were going to do, we did dis- We ended up getting discharge photos, is nice. what it was. Oh, um, cool. Because by the time we figured out that we were going to do it and how it was going to come together and everything, it was like, oh, yeah, oh, wait, okay, we get to go home? Okay, yeah. well, so, oh, and now it's dis- discharge day photos, which was really, really <laughs> exciting yeah. that it happened That's to work out that yeah. well, uh, which... I guess technically it was discharge day for one. Rory. Yeah. Foster had already been discharged, but we brought him back anyway. Um, which is why discharge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we usually brought him back anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was really fantastic. And it was very easy to speak with the staff and say, hey, we have, you know, friends who are photographers who have offered to come and do this for us. Is that okay? And it was fine. You know, we had to give per- permission. Yep. And then, you know, obviously you have to just work around the machinery and anything that is there. But for us, especially because we were at discharge, there wasn't, you know, the boys weren't still hooked up to anything. Mm -hmm. It was very easy for us to do. Like, we have pictures of us, you know, changing them and getting them ready to go. But we also took pictures. I say we. It was not the sheriff. Um, The pictures of the machinery that they had used. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the charts that we had to keep and all this kind of stuff that now when I... It Mm -hmm. is. And it's really powerful in terms of now being able to try to explain to the boys Mm -hmm. what they went through. The kids don't get what premature birth is. They don't get what the NICU is. They Mm -hmm. maybe have gotten to the hospital. Maybe not. But now we have this, you know this proof, (laughs) these visuals of, you know, this is how small you were. This is the type of bed you had to stay in. These are the machines you had to be hooked up to. This is all the stuff that we had to do. You know, we have pictures of some of the nurses. It, It really is a fantastic, fantastic thing. And it was it was really fantastic for us, yeah, to be able to, to schedule it and have it happen that it was discharged. Yeah, yeah that's these a good idea. Very fun, celebratory kind of pictures. Were for you us like now. skipping down the hallway? <laughs> what age you get with a baby in your head? Not yeah. quite, not yeah. quite. <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's such a neat experience to, to have that. And I know that not everyone wants to reflect on those experiences. For sure. But yeah. like you said, you know, you have the pictures and you don't go back and look at them. Yeah. But you know yeah. the pictures are there exactly. if there's ever a time you want to. Exactly, exactly. And it's a, it's something that if, like us, you go on to have more children, uh, you know, maybe someday they're, like, they know about their sister, but, you know, did she look like me? Did yeah. she, right? Yeah. Like, so there's there's that, that if the girls wanted to look at them, then absolutely they could they could do that because... The hospital was nice enough to offer that, and mm-hmm. people like you are nice enough to offer those things. Um, you also do some other really cool um, things that, like photo shoots, that I think a lot of people wouldn't think of mm-hmm. to do. Um, we mentioned in the last podcast about you doing um, like a I beat cancer yeah. kind of idea, like doing yeah. family photo shoots that have a story behind them. Uh, do you want to quickly tell that story again just to refresh people? So that story is uh, two friends of mine. They have two little kids, young couple. He was diagnosed with a really rare form of esophageal cancer um, out of the blue. <laughs> so for about a year, it was trips to Ontario and treatment and surgery. So we did pictures before that all started because they didn't know what he would look like later, mm-hmm. what's going to happen. So we did pictures, like we called them just in case pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, so to do them a year later at the beach, almost exactly a year later actually, um, was amazing. 
and you had a little sign that said, "My dad beat cancer." Yeah, and my the dad kids saw him awesome. beat cancer. Like, yeah. That's incredible. incredible. We didn't show him the sign. We turned oh, it around really? when we were in the air. I have a couple of pictures of him tearing up. Oh, were, yeah. <laughs> I didn't post those ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a it was a good session. They don't always end like that. So no, but I think I think we are seeing more and more, especially with social media now. It's so much easier to share these photo shoots. You know, recently people probably yeah. saw the one that went viral of the woman who, you know, took photos while she shaved her head mm -hmm. as she went into her chemo and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think more and more families are starting to think about, you know, these types of milestones mm -hmm. as yeah. something that we should photograph. You don't always have to just save the good memories. Like everything's a memory no matter what. Yeah. It, it might be a moment that doesn't come back again. Exactly, and it's getting the photos done could be a way to put a happier spin on it in a way, right? Kind of own like, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. You're owning it for yeah. sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. There's um one that you had done recently, and um, something that didn't cross my mind either, but end of life yeah. photos, yeah. like family photo shoots. It's their last photo shoot and what have yeah. you. Um, which I think is a brilliant idea as well. Is that the first time that you'd been contacted for something like that? Yeah. So it was a friend of mine, and her brother lives um, out of province, and their dad was given a limited amount of time. So he was coming home, so it was the last time everyone was going to be together. And they knew that when he went home, it was probably like, goodbye, goodbye. Mm -hmm. um, so we did family pictures at their house, everyone together. And then four days later, he was in palliative care. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. For those type of photo shoots, is it more of your typical family photo shoot or is it more telling the story of the goodbye for them they just wanted to have some pictures of everyone together and they all have little kids there was four little grandkids um it was at the parents house they didn't know if he went back in the hospital if he was coming back out um it was kind of both and like they were joking around he was in a great mood it was like it was more the family that was sad. He was like, what are you doing here? And yeah. like, just trying to like offer me camera advice yeah. and stuff. So I was like, um, but yeah, so it's, it's not as sad as I thought, mm -hmm. but at the same time, still very emotional. So. Yeah, because going into that situation as not a family member and yeah. like, how do you walk into... I was nervous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It would be like, I feel like... Like, I know how awkward I feel walking into a funeral home. Yes. Like, I just, you know, I'm, I'm, like, as the bare naked ladies say, I'm the kind of guy that laughs at a funeral. Yeah. I'm that person. <laughs> yeah. So I can imagine, um, yeah, to know what you're going in there to do and that this person knows that, like, oh, my gosh, this is my final photo shoot. Mm -hmm. Not let everybody gets photo shoots, but you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. Like, this is my last one. Yeah. So I. So many through my life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From start to finish. Uh, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that too awkward? <laughs> no, but I think it, it's funny, though, like how we've shifted just in terms of photography, yeah. too, right? It, it used to be that, you know, it was this very formal thing, and you went to someone's and studio, and you posed, yeah. and yeah, it maybe only happened maybe once in, you know, when you were a child, and mm -hmm. then, you know, if you graduated university or high school, you maybe did something else then, mm -hmm. or you got your first professional headshot that was going to be yours for the rest of your life because yeah. you stayed in the same job. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> right? And then, and then that's kind of it. And yeah. now I think we're seeing this real shift in the way that we approach all of this, which I think is really fascinating. Well, everybody is kind of inviting everyone into their lives now, yeah. right? Like, so why not bring actual good photos into it? Because, yeah, my phone can take decent photos, but then I'm not in them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's that too. And it's, so having that kind of... Um, like if I could have my own photographer, not all the time, but you <laughs> have really, have, yeah. I'm just going to have someone follow you around. <laughs> yeah. One I'm of my favorite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Move on in. You have this one photo up on the Pickle Planet uh, page that I love and it's of you wiping one of the boys' noses. And I just, I love how it, like, it's so real. It's so real. Yeah, that's been the cover photo for quite a while. I, yeah. I started changing it up a little bit this year just because the kids are so much older the, now. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that was, that was like that. And that was kind of at the heart of what I wanted people to think of when they thought of Pickle Planet. This was real life. Mm -hmm. This is just what we're doing. Yeah. And yes, real life with snotty nose little yeah. kids is wiping nose. <laughs> we know that. Right? Yeah. And yeah. like that picture. The, I will tell you, the clothes I'm wearing in that picture, those are clothes I wear to bed. Those are my pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> to be true. Well, okay, I don't think I have those clothes anymore. I think I finally took those particular <laughs> ones out. But like that was that was the point in doing that was that kind of lifestyle photo shoot idea of just yes, inviting someone who we knew had a really great eye for photography, who was yep. a professional photographer. Um, but someone that was not constrained and had that idea of, I need to be in a studio or right. I need yeah. you to pose in front of my Candidates. backdrop. It was very much like, we're just going to go about our business. And yeah, it's pictures of me wiping the boys' noses. It's pictures of Clara lining up little My Little Ponies <laughs> in this row because that's what kids do, right? Yeah. Like they, they do those like time-consuming little tasks and it perfectly captured it in a way that I would candidates. never. Y yes, yeah. I would yeah. never get that story behind the photo trying to just snap it with my phone or even with my decent camera mm -hmm. yeah. because that that's not my skill set right and yet to invite someone in and have those photos oh yeah I, I absolutely love those photos and go mm -hmm. back to them all the time mm -hmm. and I'm kind of at the point now where it's like yeah we should really do that again but I'm like I don't know if the kids are gonna look so cute now that <laughs> Wiping you know, their noses. Real, real yeah. life in our house, it might be not quite so photogenic right now. <laughs> I feel like there'll be lots of Halloween costumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's easing back a little bit on the costumes. <laughs> yeah, not as many as there used to be in our day-to-day -day life, but <laughs> there's still quite a bit of them. It's more, uh, yeah, Pokemon and Power Rangers. And Power Rangers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. Vintage. Yeah. <laughs> With Netflix. Everything net everything yeah. is new again, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean fanny packs apparently, but that is a whole other podcast <laughs> where I bought a fanny pack. I cannot June. speak about <laughs> fanny packs. <laughs> no, my, my, oh, mine is a Michael Kors very slender. It looks oh. more like Oh, it's not fluorescent. It's, no, it is okay. not fluorescent. All right. All right. But uh, it works very well if you're going to like concerts and things where you can't bring in persons. They they now make these like stylish side wallets I don't know what they're side called side wallets they use the term fanny pack <laughs> yeah. but that's what it is let's be honest what but were we talking we're about this, <laughs> is, this is derailed quickly this is, oh, this is we derail all yeah. the time but, but that's yeah. the idea is the, you know more and more I think we are coming around to realizing that we want to capture those real moments yeah. mm -hmm. of life right? there's so less like, focus on professional pose Mm -hmm. Everyone's sitting. People yeah, want turn your head real, this way. Yeah. real life memories. Yeah. Yeah. Although I have to say, I still like when someone tries to pose me a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh no. Ask turn, Tasha, I'm very bossy. Or like you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. shift that weight a little bit to the back leg. It'll be better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do still appreciate that. Yes. Much posing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. The um, I remember seeing one time, and I know that you would get on board with this uh, as a photographer and a dog lover. But I remember an end-of-life photo shoot for a friend's pet. With <gasps> the hamburgers? Uh, maybe. But they were like, like they had their dog running through the field. And it was just like, to me, that's, whoa. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, right to the heart. Yeah. Um, and again, it's just like bringing back to, to real life. And people would be, I think, more apt to be like, oh, yeah, it's my pet that is passing away. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's do end-of-life photo shoots with the pets. But, yep. but to have this normalcy put into mm -hmm. end of life for for your loved one as well I think yeah. is a fantastic thing well yeah and you can't go back and change your mind so if you don't do it and you wait too long mm -hmm. whether it's pets or loved ones you can't change your mind later and that's it and it doesn't have to be go to your to your basement where no. your photography yeah. studio is and everybody pose and no just go home and have fun and do yeah. what you guys do yeah. yeah and I'll just be sneakily in the background <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was at a photo course last night uh, with Morris Henry, okay. um, and he was talking about some of his photos, and one was a woman, he asked questions about her life, she was passing away, and he was asking her about her life and taking pictures of her face as she oh. was talking, and they were, they were great. Incredible. Yeah. I can just imagine, yeah. Not sad, but like, it was... You can see like yeah. the, the happiness of the stories. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. Yeah. 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 He does some incredible work. Yes. He did not know I was going to mention him. Before. <laughs> yes, surprise! <laughs> I would say probably one of Moncton's best known mm. photographers yeah, absolutely. for sure. Yeah. Um, in discussing with a family to do one of these shoots, whether it's you know end of life or you know capturing someone who's going through something like cancer diagnosis, that type of thing, what what kind of conversations do you and the families have ahead of doing these? these photo shoots. I'm, I'm just looking to kind of demystify the process of someone starting to think, oh, maybe that 
that's something that's going to come up in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, no one, I usually message people first. Um, they've, all the ones I've done so far have been people that I've known. Uh, if someone ever wants to message me, yeah. I, like it's, I won't think it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's okay. Um, but so far I've approached people being like, sorry to hear about that. If you want anything, if you want to remember anything, set up any kind of like, if you guys always have a picnic this time of the year, we'll mm-hmm. set up a picnic. We'll take pictures of it so that you can look at them later on. Um, and everyone has said yes. So well, and you don't think of it. That's it. Again, it's, it's back to the you're not thinking of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it is nice for you to, to step in. Um, you should be her Facebook friend so she can see in case anything goes down. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you're going to get a slew I'm going to get so like, many friend yeah. requests. Yeah. <laughs> no, but anyone can message me, especially my page, the personal page that would get filtered, but uh, my photography page. Everything comes through. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And your photography page, again, is two little twigs on Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram that she already told us she barely uses, but we're going to train her yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, we're going to push her. She's going to do some more. Of that. I have yeah. like seven <laughs> pictures up there. Seven. Uh, well, hey, they're probably your seven best. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> I'll have to check and see if there's any of me in there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if not, you can put some up because it's uh, those are fantastic photos. The ones you guys did last yeah, winter, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I would love to see some of the uh, some of these other photo shoots when the families give you permission to share them. It would be amazing to see mm-hmm. some of these local families that have. I know. I think you've shared one of them in the past. There's a few Facebook actually page. on my Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Uh, the end of life one, she gave me permission to share, and the cancer uh, victory shoot. We yes, it. that's on there as well, as well as his uh, first one, which. Not as happy, but still nice. Mm. So, yeah, exactly. They still have that moment in time. Yeah. That that's been captured forever. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. One of the scariest moments in their lives, and yeah, and yeah. Now they can look back on it and be like, <laughs> looking yeah. back now, it's interesting because the first ones, their eyes look different, their faces, you can see like the stress, and mm-hmm. then the ones at the beach, yeah. laughing, happy eyes. Chucking their kids in the air. Yeah. <laughs> it was it's different, yeah. And I when I edited them, uh, edited them subconsciously, the first ones were much darker, like mm. the colors and everything, and then the beach ones are like bright. Mm. And I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. But I looked at them a couple days ago and I was like, oh. Look what I did there. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Fantastic. And just before we say goodbye, we want to remind everyone, too, that as well, you do uh, Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep yes. program, which if someone has a stillbirth or a baby who's not going to be coming home, yeah. that uh, you can go into the hospital and take photos as well. So Yep. Yeah. So people can message me personally, or my phone number is actually on the website, now I lay me down to sleep.org. Perfect. Perfect. Or you can, if you're in the hospital, mention to your nurse, so yep. on and so forth. Trust me, even though I said I have never looked at them, it makes my heart happy knowing they're there. Yeah. And that's the most important part. And if something happens and I'm not around, the hospital can take pictures and I can retouch them. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I think we're going to wrap things up there and hope that everyone goes and checks out mm-hmm. two little twigs to see some of the photos that you've got up. Absolutely. And we want you to give us a review. If you've got the time, wherever you're listening or watching this podcast, we'd love to hear what you think. Take care. Take care.